So the number that you will see on top of the radical symbol is simply your index, and the number inside your radical sign will be your radicand. And of course, this will be your radical symbol, and this is what makes um, a, sim um, a radical expression given its parts. Now, from our previous lesson, you already know how to simplify square roots or numerical value in radical form. So if you have square root of 9, it's equal to 3, and square root of 12, it's not a prime. Um, it's not a perfect square, but you can factor it into two square root of three, and the negative number inside the square root can be simplified into an imaginary number. So instead of giving me um, a number that does not exist, you can change it or replace it with an i, so you have nine i. So square root of negative seven will give you i squared of seven. So you already know how to simplify radical expressions like this. And for today, what we're going to do is we're going to simplify ra radical expressions of this form. So the first four examples that you are seeing on the board are the expressions or um, radical expressions that we are going to work with today. So we are going to simplify square root of 15 x squared up until adding and subtracting two radicals together. Now, in my examples, I'm going to uh, separate my solution into an expansion method and algebraic method. In the expansion method, it's basically showing you a more visual representation on how we simplify radical expression. And on this side right here, this is what I want you to learn. I want you to feel comfortable on using the law of exponents and visualizing your expressions using an algebraic method so you can simplify them. So in my first example, I have square root of x to the fourth, and that means I have four x's inside my radical. So I expanded it, and since I have a square root, I need a pair of x's that I could simplify, and uh, by simplifying it, I will be able to eliminate my radical symbol. So I have two pairs of x's, so therefore, since I don't have any leftover inside the radical, my square root of x to the fourth is simply x squared. Now, in an algebraic method, if we're going to use the law of exponent, and changing square root of x to the fourth into a fractional exponent, square root of x to the fourth can be changed into x raised to four over two. And four over, over two is simply two when you simplify the fractions, so therefore, we know that square root of x to the fourth is simply x squared by dividing the uh, exponent by the index. Now, in example number two, I have uh, cubed root of x to the eighth. So just like what I did in example number one, I'm going to expand my x to the eighth inside the radical. So I have one through eight x's, and I'm going to group them into three since my index is three. So the index dic dictates how many groups of numbers you need to uh, simplify when you're working with radicals. So I have here one group of three, and then my second group of three. So I have two groups of three that I can uh, bring out. And this two x's right here that's not um, a group of three will stay inside the radical. So therefore I have x squared times cube root of x squared because I can no longer simplify this two x's right here. So they are my leftover. And in my division or my algebraic method, if I change my fraction or my radical into a fractional exponent, I'll have x raised to 8 over 3, and when you simplify 8 over 3 into a mixed number, you'll have 2 and 2 over 3. So this 2 right here will be your exponent outside your radical symbol, and the 2 thirds right here is your fractional exponent when you change your x value. So therefore I have x squared, um, cube root of x squared in the process. So this is how you simplify it algebraically. Now, on my next examples, I have a numerical value and a, a variable raised into an exponent, and we're going to simplify the expressions, or radical expressions, using expansion method and algebraic method. Now, in an expansion method, if I have square root of 9x squared y to the fourth, I know that 9 can be factored out in 2, 3 times 3, and I have 2x's and 4y's. And by grouping them together, since I have a square root, I need, to group, I need a pair of number that I can simplify. So I have a pair of 3, a pair of x, and two pairs of y. 
So all of them will go outside the radical. So there's nothing that will be left inside the radical. So my simplest form will be 3xy squared. And algebraically, you take the square root of 9, which is 3. You take the square root of x squared, which is x. And you take the square root of y to the fourth, which gives you y squared. And putting them together, you'll have 3xy squared. Now for number 3, I have the cube root of 16x to the fourth y squared. By simplifying my expressions inside the radical, I have 2, 2, 2, 2 for 16, that's my factor. And my x's, I have 4 x's. And for my y's, I have 2 y's. And in this case, I have a group of 3 for 2, so one group of 3 for 2. And I have a leftover of 2 right here because I only need 3, um, three groups of two in this example. In this case, I have four x's, I have a group of three right here, and one left over. So x will be left over here, and since y cannot be grouped into three, all this y's right here will stay inside the radical. So my simplest form will be two x, and then my left over, two x and y, so I have two x y squared inside the radical symbol. And this is my simplest form for number 3. And using an algebraic technique, cube root of 16 is 2 cube root of 2. Cube root of x to the fourth is x cube root of x. And the cube root of y squared is simply cube root of y squared because we cannot simplify it. And if it put all the terms outside the radical together and all the terms inside the radical together, this will be your simplest form. Now, in multiplying radicals, this process is sim very simple. Um, all you have to do is to multiply your radicand and simplify your radical if you need to. So for my example number one, I have square root of 3 times square root of 5. Just like what I said, by multiplying radicals, all you have to do is multiply the radicand and you'll have square root of 15. So square root of 3 times square root of 5 is square root of 15, and this is no longer factorable, or you cannot simplify it anymore, so this will be your final answer. And for number 2, I'll have square root of 4 times square root of 3. Now, in simplifying radicals, you will be developing skills on how you can uh, multiply radicals. And in this case, instead of multiplying my radicand, since I know that square root of 4 is 2, I did not multiply them anymore. I simply simplified my square root of 4 into 2 and just combined my real number by my radical expression and I have 2 square root of 3. So those are some techniques that you can um, use in simplifying or multiplying radicals. And for my third example, I have square root of 12 times square root of 10. I know that square root of 12 can be simplified into 2 square root of 3, and square root of 10 cannot be simplified anymore, so I only have square root of 10 right here. And by multiplying my radicand and leaving my real number outside the radical, my simplest form for this expression when I multiply them is 2 square root of 30.